Hey guys, Chad Trofkerbin here from the Incredible Tutorials YouTube channel. Jim Mills and I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 10 tutorials. So I hope you're ready, because we're about to get started. In Anime Studio Pro, you have the ability to enable physics on certain objects. This will allow for different effects. Let's say, for instance, you have an object collide into another object on your animation. With physics turned on, that second object will react accordingly. Whether it falls over or flies off an edge depends on the physics settings and what you have drawn for your base. So to get started, we'll first need to create a group layer. All of our physics-based objects will be housed in the group layer. This means that we can create objects outside of that layer that don't have physics. Ultimately, this allows us to have a project file that has both normal layers and physics-based layers. So, let's go to our Layers panel, choose New Layer, and go to Group. I'll name this group layer Physics. Now, I'll take Layer 1 and drag it into the Physics layer. I'll double click on Layer 1 and name this Base. Now, I'll take my Add Point tool making sure that sharp corners are turned on as well as auto weld and auto fill. Come over here to my style panel and select a green color. And starting near the top, I'll click and drag to create a line like this and then a straight line and then a vertical line. And then I'll loop around here to finish off the object. Next, we'll create the object that's going to collide into our second object. So I'll make a new layer, a vector layer. I'll name this ball, grab my shape tool, and select the oval. Choose a fill color. I'll make it red, and I'll draw the oval right about here. Now I'll need the object the oval is going to run into. So I'll make a new layer, vector, I can just name this rectangle. Now with the draw shape tool, grab a rectangle, change the fill color. I'll make it purple or blue. Let's go purple. Click OK. And then I'll draw a rectangle that looks like this. Now the next step is to enable physics in your group layer. So double click on your group layer. Go to the physics tab. And select enable physics. Here you can choose where the gravity direction is going plus the gravity magnitude. I'll leave these at their defaults right now. We can come back later if we want to change them. Now let's double click on our base. Go to physics. And you'll notice that physics are already enabled and that's because it is under the physics group layer. We want to make this a non-moving object though because the base will not move. All the objects above it will. So once you do that, we can click OK. If we double click on the rectangle and go to physics, we can select start asleep. While this may not be needed for this particular animation, what this will do is it will keep the rectangle stationary until an object interacts with it. We don't want to do that with the oval or ball layer because we want it to drop from the gravity. So once we do that, we can click OK. So now, if we hit play, we can see the ball fall and hit the rectangle. And they react accordingly. You'll also notice when I hit stop that a bunch of keyframes were created on my rectangle layer. And that is because as you play the physics out on the timeline, it will create keyframes to animate out the physics. To be honest though, I wasn't really feeling the fast motion we had going here. It almost went a little bit too quick. 
So first, let me go up here to animation and just clear the animation from the document to get rid of those keyframes. And now I'll double click on the physics folder and choose physics. And you'll remember we had some gravity things we could change here. I think the direction of the gravity is fine, but I think it's the magnitude we want to change. So let me adjust this to about three and click OK. So now if I hit play, we have more bounce, not to mention it goes a little bit slower for us. Finally, there are some other things we can adjust, which pertains to each physics layer. So for instance, if I double click on the rectangle layer and go to my physics tab, we can of course enable or disable physics as well as non-moving object and start asleep. But there are some other options we can play with here too. For instance, for lifetime frames, if we leave this to zero, the object will continue to move forever, basically until we end our animation. If we set a frame number here, the animation for the physics-based object will play out until it hits that frame number, and then it will go back to the beginning of its animation and start over again. The initial direction is the starting direction for your object. You can adjust the direction of which it goes. This also goes in hand with initial speed. You can adjust, again, how fast an object will start with its physics motion. The lower the density, the less, I guess, heavy it would be. So, for instance, if we put our density of a rectangle very low, it would have much more animation to it when the ball hits it. Friction dictates how much two objects will slow each other down when they are moving in the animation. And the springiness dictates when two objects collide, how much of a bounce they'll have when they fly apart. Pivot on origin will pivot the object through its origin, which we dictate in our tools panel, as opposed to just toppling over as we saw with the rectangle. It just fell over. In this case, it would just rotate based on its origin. The motor speed and torque options allow you to further tweak your physics-based object, especially when it comes to rotation. And you have your force field option below as well. In the end, it's just best to play with these options. Play around and see what works best for you. I'm sure if you tweak the options some, you'll be able to get the desired effects you need for your physics-based objects. Anyway, that wraps up this lesson. If you have any more questions regarding Anime Studio, please visit the official Anime Studio website at anime.smithmicro.com. Thanks for watching, guys. I have more tutorials out there, so check them out, and I'll see you next time.